That works great. Now, let's see if we can do a whole box at once. Yes, sir, can I help you? Why, yes, you most certainly can. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it! Stop it! Yes, Rusty and Skippy! Tickle that fool while I... Dr. Airman! My friend! I'm glad you're here. Now we can join forces and... Come with me if you want to live. But, I don't understand. You aren't on my side, are you? Correct. At one time, I was not. But I was captured and reprogrammed by the Fundamentalist Freedom Front. It was they who sent me back in time with these instructions. Take care of Norman Geisler. Yes. I did not come when I did. Dr. Avalos and his tickling squirrel ninjas would have terminated you. I was sent back in time to rescue you and bring you here. Your wisdom and guidance is needed, Dr. Geisler. Please, come with me. You were sent back in time? What year is this? 2018. By the state, but the atheists have taken over the entire planet. Christians are a tiny minority in hiding, struggling to survive. The fundamentalist Freedom Front is hoping that your leadership can revitalize their cause. Huh, I've never prevented that apocalypse of mine here. Ha ha ha! You, you are small and weak, but you have a very man. You are no match for the Richard Dawkins Automaton Horde. What did you say? I seem to have had a momentary reversal in my programming. Oh, I see. Uh, wait a minute, who's that? Uncertain. I could blast our way through. Wait, I recognize one of them. That's Robert Gundry. But who's that with him? But are your orders? Let's see what they want. Well, Norman, I see you're finally here. Yes, what do you three want? I imagine it's your fault Christians are in this predicament. Actually, Norm, this whole mess goes back to the controversy you had with this guy. And while I don't agree with his views on Matthew's intentions as an author, I do agree that his views aren't incompatible with inerrancy. Ah, don't you see the slippery slope you're going down? If Matthew can create myths about Jesus' life that are not true, and he can also create sayings of Jesus that Jesus never said. We would be left with no assurance as to the truth of what Jesus actually did or said. Oh, come on, how can you worry about that? Matthew and the other Gospels are just as readily accused of making up things Jesus said or did by those who place them in the genre of ancient biography or history. Your friend there certainly never let that stop him. <laughs> Hate to tell you, but the fundy atheists don't need your slippery slope to get where they want to go. The only way to get the assurance you asked for hasn't changed and is the same as it would be for any document. We have to figure out the intention of the author and sift and weigh evidence for historicity. Intention of the author? Hogwash. The purpose and intention of an author should never be part of our interpretation. Did I hear you right? I didn't stutter. You're confusing the what of a passage with the why of a passage. You don't need to know a why in order to understand a what. <laughs> You're kidding, right? No, I'm not. Take Exodus 23.19, where it says you are not to boil a kid in its mother's milk. Commentators have offered many speculations as to why that command was given. But the children of Israel didn't need to know why. All they needed to know was what it meant, and that is clear without knowing the purpose. Uh, Norm, that's a whacked out argument for a couple of reasons. First of all, the biblical text was written in a high-context society. 
in which the audience is assumed to be in on the why. So the lack of a why in the text is not sufficient argument to say that there was not one that was understood. Second, even without high context, you're taking a false step. Just because we don't know the purpose doesn't mean that they didn't know it. Regardless of any statement of purpose, that law did have some purpose, even if it were not revealed to Israel at any point in its history by whatever means. Fooey, I say that no method is legitimate if it goes behind or beyond the text to find the meaning. Oh, good heavens, that's exactly the kind of backwards attitude that got us in this mess. Listen, what language was the Bible written in? Uh, well, most of it was written in Hebrew, some in Greek and a little Aramaic. And how do we learn those languages so we can read the Bible to begin with? Are they taught to us in the Bible? Well, no. Precisely. In order to read the text in those languages and translate it, we have to go behind or beyond it to find the meaning of those words. Your argument's self-refuting. Indeed so. I, for one, refuse to separate the text from the author's mind, as you do. To make such a separation is to empty the text of any meaning except what we read into it. That's a fact. Your whole argument is a recipe for disaster. Now, I'm not saying there are not times when it may be hard or even impossible to understand an author's intentions. But what you're saying about intent in such an absolute way amounts to a scorched earth policy with respect to exegesis. And lo and behold, look what it got us. Ah, I still say you can never know an author's intent. Your slippery slope will lead us further into disaster if you continue to... Take care of Norman Geisler. What? I thought I could be sure what was intended by these instructions. Since it came from the leader of the fundamentalist Freedom Front, I thought that when he said to take care of you, he meant to protect you. But take care of you can also mean... Eliminate you! No, no, no! Don't do that! Ah, don't take care, you little philosopher. Your Honor, I insist this cease immediately. My client has already suffered enough at the hands of this rogue due to a snowball injury. Uh-huh. What do you have to say about this? Your Honor, the prosecution's client is nothing more than a cartoon. He can't be injured. See? Why well, protest? This is clearly an act of personal violence against... Hmm. This is clearly a frivolous lawsuit. I find in the favor of the defendant. Well, I guess we better help him out. Secret weapon, please. <coughs> yep, that was a fatal flaw of the E3000. It always fell for the old banana peel trick. Huh. I could have taken him on. What, by quoting 60-plus-year-old scholarship like you did in Defending Inerrancy? Please. That chapter and your dismissal of Bach and Webb were apologetics travesties. What? Look, I'll put this as nicely as I can, but I'm also going to be blunt. The best chance the church has right now to win this war is with us, the Christian Scholars League. And the last thing we need is for you to stand in our way. Now wait a minute. If I'm such a problem as you say, then why'd the funny atheist send Dr. Avalos and his ninja squirrels after me? I must be doing a pretty good job for them to do that. Oh, please. Avalos is such a looney tune that he thinks it's plausible to argue that Jesus never even existed. Did it maybe occur to you that he fouled up and went to the wrong address? Yep, he was actually sent to rub out William Lane Craig. Okay, I'm sending you home. Ah, I don't care what he says. Yes, sir, can I... Oh, hello, Sam. Do you have a delivery for me? Yes, sir, Dr. Geisler. A whole box of books for you. Hi. Ah, yes. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, Dr. Geisler? Yes, Sam? Why did you just shred a whole box of your new book, Defending Inerrancy? <laughs>